Hey guys, I'm Nikki with Resin Melody and today I would like to walk through how to restring a doll. And for this particular video, I will be using a Volks MSD FO4 and I will show you a few different tools that I have available to use, but I will also talk about my preferred method, which is actually the method that's the easiest to purchase. So as you can see here, I have different tools laid out. I have pipe cleaners, I have rat tail is what it's called. You can also use ribbon if you choose not to use rat tail or I think it's also called nylon cording. And I threw a face mask in here just to show that I do also use this for my face masks. So I actually always have restringing tools on me anytime I go to a doll meet or anytime I bring my dolls anywhere. So that that's one way to keep that with you and as a convenience. I have a couple different restraining tools. I have this particular one from Dalmore is an SD size and you can tell just by the length of it. And then I have these two here from Volks, the one with the wider wire. This is generally used for SD dolls and then the one with the thinner wire is used for YoSD and MSD. And they have that just because the tension of the elastic is needed for the, so the thicker wire is needed for a heavier tension on the elastic. I have my scissors to cut the elastic and then I also have two different sizes of elastic. So for Volks MSD, I know that a three and a half millimeter elastic is perfect to go from the head to the, to the feet, so down the legs. And I know a three millimeter elastic is to go from wrist to wrist, so across the arms. And then obviously I have my Volks MSD right here as well. So quite honestly, I have my restraining tools and I'm not a huge fan. <laughs> I know that it sounds counterintuitive that there's a tool specifically to be used for restringing and people don't like them. And it's honestly all personal preference. There is one restringing tool that I would actually really like to get and that's called a head puller. And it's very similar to this style of a restraining tool, but the length of it is very short and it's basically just a hook so that you can hook into either the elastic or the the s hook and pull up the head <laughs> the the elastic through the head with these since they're so long it's kind of hard to get the leverage needed to do that so quite honestly for my restraining tools i am going to be using the nylon cording or the rat tail and pipe cleaners so i will not be showing how to use the restraining tools in this particular video so I will just go ahead and get rid of these now. I may do a video in the future though, showing how the, the restraining tools work. Okay, now that I have cleared off my workspace and I have just the tools that I'm going to need for restringing, we can get started. Unfortunately, all of my MSDs have recently been restrung. So I'm not able to show how loose she was when I actually first got her. But generally, if you know that your doll can hold various poses, but for whatever reason they're not, and you think a restringing can help with that, which oftentimes it can. A lot of times, so for example, like she can hold her arm up like, like this. And I know that when she needs restringing, her arm was just gonna flop right back down. So same thing with the legs. I know that she can generally sit and she can hold that, that pose with the sitting. So when she needs that restringing, her legs are just really floppy and they won't actually hold a pose. And the same thing is like, I can kind of pull on her legs and they, they have good tension. When dolls need restringing, if you pull on the legs, they are gonna be very, very loose. Or if the elastic that's used is a really stretchy elastic, you'll be able to pull it. And one of the companies I know for a fact, actually there's two companies, one is Dolshi, who will always use really stretchy elastic that is terrible for holding poses. And the other company is Resin Soul. So I am, I'm currently actually saving to get another resin sole. I unfortunately don't have any more, but I would love to show restraining a resin sole as well because they can pose beautifully when they're strung with great elastic. I will go ahead and unstring her and then I will show you guys how to determine the correct length of elastic and then how to actually restring your doll. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and start by removing her head cap. Now, she does not have a magnetic system. She's an older Volks doll, so she actually has a rubber band. 
in her head cap that I use to attach to the S hook. Some dolls have that, some dolls don't. If you have an older doll, they do not have the magnets to hold the head cap on. So either the head cap will be attached to the S hook or there'll be some other way to hold the, S the head cap on by the S hook. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and just take a piece of this rat tail. I fold it and have to create a loop and I'm just gonna pull up on the S hook and I'm gonna twist it at the same time. So I'm gonna quick put that back and then I will show you closer up. So this is the inside of her head. As I pull up, I'm also going to twist and you can see it just as a slot where I can take off her head. Now, some of you may have dolls where the knot is at the top of the neck. It is honestly your choice if you want to have the knot in the top of the neck or if you want to have the knot located in the chest. I personally prefer to have it located in the chest because it makes removing the head a lot easier if I ever have to remove the head. But now that I have her head off, the next thing that I do is actually start at the feet. So I just go ahead and I pull that out. I hold the elastic with my fingers and I pull the S hook off. And then I will actually just let that elastic snap right back into the leg. And I keep everything in the same spot. So I have this foot with this ankle, this leg and this thigh. So the, the shin calf part and then the thigh part. Um, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So again, I pull, I hold the ankle, I pull the foot, foot out, I just grip the elastic like that, unhook the S hook, and I just let go of the elastic and it'll snap back in and I lay out all the pieces just like so. Now, Volkswagen's are a little bit different. They have, they have a, a jump ring inside their calf. So you can see there's like a little tiny ridge inside their calf part. And this jump ring will sit in there. And that way, if for whatever reason, the S hook in the leg snaps up into the leg, it will only go that far, which makes it easier to get that out. So I do the same thing. I just keep the that little jump ring right there. Your doll may or may not have the piece and if it doesn't, that's totally fine. So I'm gonna just remove the hips and then I'm going to take the S hook off and then I pull the elastic from the bottom of the chest. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move her head over so that we can do we can do the arms and I'm just going to put these all together because this is going to make a difference in how to determine the length of the elastic. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'll move the old elastic over so that we don't get that confused. I'm going to do the same thing with the hands. So in the hands, I'm going to pull this out, push this wrist joint down so I can grab the elastic, pull the S hook out of the elastic. And just let go and then I take the whole thing off all at once so in her arms she actually has that same style of jump ring and then on the other hand I'm gonna do the same thing and the second one is always easier than the first one especially if they are actually really nicely strung I'm just gonna let go pull these off there's the jump ring and then this one, I'm gonna go up through the bottom because the, that was, the knot was in the middle of the chest. And here we have all of our pieces for restringing. Okay, so one of the tricks that I've learned in restringing, and actually with the elastic, there's one brand of elastic that I, I am a huge fan of, and it's actually the only elastic that I will use, and that's the elastic from Cool Cat. I will include a link in the description below for all the materials that I've used today, but Cool Cat's elastic is really nice. It has a really good tension, a really good spring to it that I'm not worried about 
whether or not it's going to lose elasticity too much too quickly or if it's too stretchy of elastic when i have ordered from other companies or when i have tried ordering just round elastic whether it's from joann's or amazon or ebay for restringing i've always run into issues where it's not a nice tension like it doesn't hold the doll's tension very well and that includes elastic from doll more that includes elastic from doll she i'm sorry doll zone and uh, you know doll she too when i buy dolls new from doll she i always have to restrain them right away because they can't hold poses otherwise <laughs> so the the cool cat elastic i swear by it hands down it's fantastic and one of the things that i've learned is to measure the elastic so i am going to show you how I do this. So I use one loop folded in half to go from the neck to the feet. So if I have one loop here and I fold that in half, you can see now I have two that go from the neck to the feet. And what I do is when it's folded in half, I just measure it and you can see, I kind of put the doll back together so the joints are in place. And you can actually measure this before you take your doll apart. I always forget and I do it at this point. Okay, so here, if I say, okay, this is the loose end, this is about where I'm measuring it. If I fold it in half, even it out, I want it to go from the neck to the knees. If it goes from the neck to the knees, it's gonna have nice tension going all the way to the feet. So I do usually have to play around just a little bit to make sure that it's long enough. And we're almost there. Okay. We can see we're almost here. And there are other ways that you can restrain. You can restrain with two separate loops of elastic that go from the neck to the, the ankles. I don't recommend that though because it's so easy to accidentally get different lengths of elastic and then you have one leg that's, that's perfect and another leg that's either too tight or too loose and that's just really frustrating. So if you do it this way, you can even things out a little bit if it doesn't initially sit at equal tension. So all I'm doing here is I literally just tied it in a knot. Don't tie it in a box knot because it won't stay. It won't hold. So I tied it in a knot. I don't cut it just yet. I remeasure and double check that it's going from the neck to the knees. And if I hold this tight, I can actually stretch it from the neck to the ankles. And that's, to me, that's a good tension. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the elastic. Okay. Now, I tend to keep the packaging that I have for all my elastic. Cause as you can see, this was one package of three and a half millimeter from Cool Cat. And this is enough to restring at least one other, maybe two other dolls. So I try to keep the packaging together. And when we're done here, I'll probably put it in a Ziploc bag just so that I have it all in the same spot. So in this case, the easiest way when I was first learning how to restring was to put the knot at the, the head. Look at your doll's neck hole in the head. So you can see in her neck hole, there's actually a really big circle here. So I could put the knot at the neck if this is a very skinny slot to slide the S hook through, putting the knot in the neck is actually going to make it very, very difficult to put her head on. So you're gonna want to put the knot in the chest. And so what I do in that case, you can see here that I've got the knot at the top and I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this, usually about right here, and just move that knot down a little bit. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and use my pipe cleaner. A lot of times I like to use a pipe cleaner just to move things through the stringing channels because it's soft, it's flexible, it's not gonna cause any damage and it's pretty easy to use. But I do usually twist 
the ends together. Otherwise it can be very frustrating when they separate and go through. So I'm just coming up from the bottom. Again, I have this couple inches up from the knot. So I'm coming up from the bottom and I have this, the elastic here. I'm just gonna pop that S hook on. So that when we're applying tension to it, for the rest of the parts, the elastic won't come out of the neck. And I'm discovering this girl is very dirty. So look up for a different video as well. <laughs> I'll be doing another video on how to clean a resin doll. And I will focus primarily on resin just because that's what I have. Okay, let's see. So what happened was I tried to separate these loops here and they're, as you can see, they're connected here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and you can see there I've separated them. They're kind of joined up by the knot. That's okay because what we're gonna do now is use the same pipe cleaner and I actually use basically one pipe cleaner and two pieces of ribbon or rat tail. I do not recommend using pipe cleaners to pull and I don't recommend using wire. If you use wire to pull, chances are you are going to slice your fingers. So I'm just inserting the pipe cleaner down here and I look to make sure that this side of the elastic is going into this side of the hip. So there's that one. And I'm gonna remove the pipe cleaner. I'm actually gonna put a piece of rat tail in there. And what that does is if for whatever reason, this elastic goes back up into this channel, I can always grab, it, it has lengthened it. So I can always grab the rat tail to pull it back down. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this hip. I didn't get that twisted quite tight enough. And you can see it coming out there. That's perfect, that's where I want it to be. And since I have this one already here and I have this already attached, I'm just gonna go ahead and I try to do it pretty evenly throughout. So I will do both thigh parts and then I will go calf to feet. And I just think that kind of helps keep the tension even on the two sides of the elastic. I'm gonna go like this and you can see there's already a little bit of tension there so I'm gonna take my second piece of rat tail and I'm just going to loop that in here and I'm gonna pull that so it's about halfway so again if that when that slides back up because now we're at the point where things are going to start sliding up I have a longer piece of the rat tail to grab onto so same thing I'm gonna just disconnect the pipe cleaner there and I could reattach it here I think her stringing channels might be big enough I could use the rat tail to just go all the way through so let's try that because rat tail tends to have a little bit more structure too than ribbon does you can use eighth inch or quarter inch ribbon. I don't recommend using eighth inch ribbon just because it's so tiny, but if that's what you have, use it. It's still going to be better than using yarn. It's going to be better than using string and it's by all means going to be better than using a wire. Yarn and cotton string are usually too, too small. And I remember there were times where that's all I had. And oh man, the, the I used to almost cut my hands just because of the, the friction and the tension that was needed for it. So I was right, her stringing channels are wide enough that I can go ahead and just continue this. So I'm gonna slide this rat tail in through here and you can see that it's coming out the other end and I wait for both ends and just pull that. And rather than pulling the elastic all the way down just yet, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one. And same thing here. Okay. And then 
I'm gonna do the jump rings as well. Like I said, if you don't have jump rings, that's okay. Most companies don't use them. I do actually think that that is something that's specific to Volks. And I see that the S hook came out. So when it comes to the ankle joints, sometimes the ankle joints are going to sit with the ball towards the foot and sometimes they're gonna sit with the ball towards the calf. On Volk specifically, the ball will always go towards the calf. And you can see it's very difficult to put the elastic on the S hook if you have the ball already set in to the foot. So I'm gonna bring that a little bit closer. <laughs> you can see how difficult that is. So we do string it so that the ball is first and then you use the S hook to connect to the elastic and it'll all come together. So we're gonna put the ankles on. Okay, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and pull. And again, I clamp with my fingers. I'm not a huge fan of using hemostats, but I will go ahead and link to I'll go ahead and link to a pair of hemostats just so that for those of you who aren't able to grasp the elastic very well, which I understand I have had a history of hand and wrist problems, so I totally get it. Uh, that can be a very useful tool. I'm also left-handed, so a lot of times the the mechanism on hemostats to get them to lock and release is made for right-handed people. And that's a problem. <laughs> I have a very hard time getting them to release once I have locked them. So I generally don't, um, don't like them. I'm not a huge fan. But as you can see, what I just did is the exact same thing that I did on the previous leg. Now I'm trying to get the S hook in here now. I made the mistake of taking the rat tail out before I had the S hook on. It's all a learning curve. It's really no big deal. If if you do that and the elastic snaps back into the leg, you just re-thread it on. It's not an issue. And so now I'm holding the rat tail so I can get this S hook. And sometimes what I'll do is take the S hook off the foot the S hook on the elastic <laughs> and then put the foot back on the S hook and then I can take this rat tail out and there we go so now I have a doll and I'm just testing to make sure that she can stand and that she's solid before I do the arms and that really is more so just to make sure that I don't have to restring anything in the legs before I add the arms and another set of strings to worry about. So as you can see, she does stand very nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and lay her down again. And I'm just gonna double check. So the evenness on the tension is actually really nice. So I'm gonna leave that as is. If for whatever reason you get the tension not as good on one leg. So one leg is very loose compared to the other. You can, the loose one, I'm sorry, the tight one, if you pull that out, you can start pulling on one side of the elastic string and it'll start, basically what it has to do is it has to pull it tight up at the neck and then it'll start pulling elastic from the other side. So it will even out, but sometimes it can be a little tough. If you find that that's happened and it's just, too much of a struggle to try to even it out when they're strung. You've now seen how to string the legs, so feel free to take them apart, try it again. Like I said, I found that doing things one side and then the other on each individual piece tends to help make that elastic equal tension between the two sides. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the arms. And really it's just the the, the upper arms that I need at the moment because I'm gonna do the same thing with the arms with measuring the elastic as I do with the legs. So with the legs, we went from the neck to the knees and with the arms, we're actually gonna go 
Essentially, it's elbow to elbow. If you go elbow to elbow with one loop of elastic, it should go wrist to wrist, which is ultimately what we want to happen. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of lay these out a little bit better. I'm gonna put the shoulders into the socket as best I can. Again, you know, it probably makes the most sense to do this before you unstring them, but I did not. So I apologize for that. <laughs> okay, and then because the stringing channels, I'm actually taking a look here. So generally with the arms, the stringing channels are, are smaller. And that is why I tend to use a half a millimeter size smaller in the arms than I do in the legs. Some dolls, you can use the same size. And I actually just took a quick look at the elastic I had that I did have in her and I had three and a half millimeter elastic in both the arms and the legs. It really is gonna depend on the doll. So I'm gonna go ahead and do exactly what I said I was going to do in the beginning. I'm gonna use three millimeter in her arms and I'm gonna use three and a half millimeter in her legs. And I'm gonna measure that out the same way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and loop that here. Oh, that's way too big. And that's actually a little small. And what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that this loop here, and then I'm going a little bit extended because I know I'm gonna put a knot in there. So when the, the knot is in, when it's all said and done, this loop is going to go from elbow to elbow. And then if I hold this tight and I stretch, it'll go from wrist to wrist. And there is quite a bit of tension there, but generally the arms do need more tension um, just to hold some of those poses. But again, you're going to find the tension that you prefer. And I think starting this way, elbow to elbow, and then also um, neck to knee for the tension, I think it's a really good place to start. And if you decide that you prefer to have a looser tension or a tighter tension, obviously you can make that choice yourself. <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to make any any comments about that. And so in this case, I'm just double checking the loop and the loop is going, this may end up being a little bit tighter than I like, but just checking the length, I think it'll be okay. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and cut this or attempt to with my terrible fabric scissors. Okay. And this is an instance where I'm realizing you could have strung the arms first. And I will probably also make a tutorial where I show that because getting the knot through that shoulder socket can sometimes be a struggle. It's not always a struggle. And with Volksdolls that have large stringing channels, it it generally is not. So I'm gonna go ahead and I use this pipe cleaner. And you can see inside there, you can see the elastic going from the neck to the ankles. And I'm going to weave the pipe cleaner behind the elastic that's in the torso and come out the other side. And I'm gonna hold this while I pull the knot through. And there we go. So now the knot is inside. So it's inside the torso. I'm just gonna even this out a little bit. And one of the things that I like to do that it may not be very common, I don't know, but on this side, cause I'm not working on this side just yet. I'm gonna loop this up over the neck so that I get a little bit of tension here. And I'm gonna go ahead and straighten her legs out. Okay. And on the arms, I do actually go the entire arm all at once. You can split it up like you do with the legs, but with the rat tail, again, pipe cleaner or rat tail to thread it and I just slide it in, look for the two ends, pull it through. Same thing here, slide it in, 
Look for the two ends, pull it through. And I know, same thing as the feet. Oops, got the jump ring to add in there. And then when it comes to the wrist ball, it's the same thing as the feet. So with Volks, you're gonna put the ball side towards the, the arm. And you pull, clamp with either a tool or your fingers, slide the S hook in, take the rat, tool, rat tail out, and okay, and then slide the hand back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the rat tail here before I take it up over the neck. Pull this up and around the S hook. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna thread everything through. So I've got it on the shoulder, the lower arm. The jump ring. The wrist ball. And I'm gonna pull this through. I grasp it with my hands. I'm gonna put the S hook on first and then put the hand on and take out the rat tail. Okay. So I do have her fully strung. and it looks like she can hold poses. Now some of it, as you guys I'm sure are well aware, shoulders are always tricky. Resin is smooth and there's not a lot of grip in there. So I will go ahead and at some point, I'm gonna show you a few different ways to suede that and actually help with some of those jointings. But in the meantime, we now have a doll that can stand without an issue. If you find that your doll is trying to lean forward a lot or knees are kicking, generally that is one of two things. Number one, either the elastic is twisted inside the joints. So you can look in either in the, the thigh joint or at the knee and you can see, and if it's twisted, you can actually just take the foot and turn the foot. And you'll start noticing that it'll be a little bit better. So I think she actually had both of her feet were, um, both of her feet were, had <laughs> needed to be twisted and now she stands great. Um, same thing with the arms. Like if you notice that things are just not quite working well, look at the, the shoulder, look at the elbows just make sure that the elastic is straight. And what I mean by that is when you have the elastic, you're gonna have two pieces side by side instead of crossing over each other. If they're crossing over each other, they're, they're twisted. So now to put her head back on, I'm just gonna sit her up. I use, I'm gonna use the shorter rat tail, but it doesn't matter. Oops. So I'm gonna go ahead and put her head on. And all I'm doing here is I'm turning the S hook so that when I put her head on and she's facing away from me, I have the opening of the S hook right here so I can slide this rat tail in. Oops. So I can slide this rat tail in. I'm gonna hold her head down. I'm gonna pull up and the S hook actually just twists right into place. And then with her, like I said, she has a rubber band instead of magnets. I'm gonna pull those rubber bands down, clip them onto the S hook, and there we go. And she is now fully strung, fully put back together. She poses beautifully, and I think once you do this, your dolls are gonna pose beautifully too. Did this tutorial help you? 
Is this something that you would like to see more of with different sizes or brands of dolls that have slightly different parts? Is there anything else that is just really something that you'd like to know? Or maybe you've been in the hobby for a long time and it was you have something that you wish you would have known. Let me know in the comments down below because I'd love to make more videos like this that are helpful and informative to people. So by all means, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. Let me know your thoughts and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.